for update on COVID-19 pandemic. Adesua Omoroan is now here with us. Hello, the queen of the Benin kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dr. Yeah. Abati. Great to see you. Good morning. I call her Good queen morning. of the screen. Greatest man on earth. <laughs> Good morning. 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 Well, let's quickly look at the global figures as provided by the Johns Hopkins <coughs> University Tally. At the moment, we have about 597 million infections since the beginning of this pandemic and at least 6.4 million deaths. Uh, we also now have over 12 billion vaccine doses administered around the world, however inequitable. Uh, there's no doubt that we are now seeing uh, a shift from the guidance that had been put in place in many countries when this pandemic started. Uh, countries are opening up uh, to some, it's pre-pandemic level all over again. But the WHO is still warning that this is still a pandemic. Hey, Nigeria, what are the figures? Well, officials reported 178 new infections between August 20 and August 22. And of course, uh, vaccination agency, the NPH today, also put out some figures. Uh, they say a little over 29 million of the total eligible uh, individuals targeted for vaccination against this virus have now been fully vaccinated in Nigeria. It also stated that at least 12.1 million are partially vaccinated, meaning they've gotten one dose of the two-shot regimen uh, vaccines available in the country. It's only the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, remember guys, that has one dose. Uh, although restrictions, like I say, have been lifted in Nigeria, like many other countries, there are warnings. In fact, a renowned virologist here in Nigeria, Professor Oyewole Tomori, who was our guest on Newsnight yesterday night, is warning against, uh, you know, forgetting and abandoning all those protocols just yet. He was speaking on monkeypox in Nigeria. However, I put a question to him about where is Nigeria when it comes to COVID-19 pandemic? Listen to him. If 50% of your laboratories are no longer testing, you're not actually getting the real figure. So what this NCDC is putting out is a tip of the iceberg. The, the labs are not testing. Many people are not, I mean, everybody has abandoned it. But go back in other parts of the world. People are still coming into this country who are coming with COVID into the country and spreading it. And if we break all the laws, I mean, where is our task force? Have you ever heard anything from them for the last two months or three months? No, they do have abandoned it. So everybody has abandoned the whole thing. It's still around and we better be careful. Wow. We better be careful. Those are the words of Professor Oyewale Tomori, Nigeria's renowned virologist. Let's go to China. Uh, China's COVID shutdowns is not only hitting global supply chain, it's also affecting uh, marriage and childbirth in the country. Well, that's according to the National Health Commission. The commission says many women are continuing to delay their plans to marry or have children. It also says rapid economic and social development have uh, led to profound changes. Uh, China only recently says in an acceleration in childbirth and marriages, but again, there's now a decline, no thanks to COVID-19. And finally, to the US, earlier in the week, uh, after more than 50 years in public service, Dr. Anthony Fauci, some like to call him the face of COVID in the US, uh, he's the US top infectious disease expert. He announced on Monday that he will leave both his post as director for the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, as well as being the top medical advisor to President Joe Biden. The 81-year-old Fauci says he will pursue the next phase of his career, but he had previously said he will step down at the end of the Biden administration. So we do not know while this turn around, he says he will now leave at the end of this year, 2022. Back to you guys, the great Malabites. <laughs> <laughs> okay, am I really playing the great Malabites? Yes. Do you want to go first? <laughs> yes. Well, what, um, when I listened to Professor Tomori yesterday night, I was very worried, very worried, that even the tax force seems to have, to have gone on holidays. We don't hear from the tax force anymore. Testing, according to Professor, it's not even going on. We just get some data, two weeks old, and, and we give uh, that as a figure current. Yet, in other climes, in other parts of the world, they, still, they are still taking this very seriously. 
there's still infections and people are crisscrossing the globe, including Nigerians who travel a lot and people want to visit Nigeria, yet we are not doing enough testing or testing seem to have gone uh, left to lab scientists to continue the experiment. I think it's a sad story and uh, we need to ask, where is the tax force? Is it because we are not spending billions again that nobody is interested? We want to see what they are doing because there is still the problem of COVID-19 all over the world, not only in Nigeria. So Nigeria cannot pretend that uh, nothing is happening, we are normal, we are cool with ourselves. And uh, there's been the campaign for Nigerians to go for uh, the vaccines. Even at the peak of the pandemic, many were weary to go and take uh, the vaccine, let alone now that government is not even showing enough commitment. So the commitment must be sustained and reawakened by government. So wherever those tax force members are now, they should be reminded that it is not over because their counterparts in other parts of the world are still very busy. Ruben. Yes, well, Professor Tomori is, um, you know, uh, right on point. And he's been very consistent uh, all through this pandemic in drawing attention to the need for continued vigilance. As recently as June uh, this year, he still pointed out that nobody should be under any illusion that COVID has disappeared. So uh, Nigeria still allows people to come in. Uh, we're not doing enough test testing. We're not doing enough surveillance. His big argument is that whereas other countries may be lowering uh, restrictions, people may not be going into quarantine. The truth is that countries like us, like Nigeria, that depend on donated vaccines, cannot go and be emulating developed countries that have all the facilities and resources. And his recommendation, as recently as June, is that, look, those non-medical uh, interventions, wearing of masks, uh, you know, keeping distance, you know, trying to avoid Wash unnecessary exposure, safety, Wash and all of that, that, that is our best bet. And that's perhaps, you know, one argument from Professor Oyewale Tomori that nobody can take away from it. So even if government lacks capacity in terms of surveillance and testing, then, of course, you as an individual can protect yourself. And that is also consistent with the position of the World Health Organization. That has been saying again, like Professor Tomori, that this virus has not disappeared. Across the world, we still have the BA4, we have the BA5. Uh, China uh, uh, has continued to apply its uh, zero COVID uh, uh, policy, shutting down. It's uh, projected 5.5 uh, growth uh, you know, out outlook is already affected. Uh, uh, China now, in terms of outlook, is saying where well, we are expecting good economic results because China too is not too sure. In Marshall Islands, in the Pacific Ocean, you know, that, those, that collection of uh, islands. Last week, they had uh, up to about 7% uh, rate of uh, infection. David Kubwa, the president of, uh, of Marshall Islands, had to uh, issue an emergency declaration to be able to have access to funds to address the crisis. So in many parts of the world, this problem remains. And so, you know, I hope there will be people listening uh, to Professor Yewali Tomori. Uh, now that all of us have relaxed, uh, we go to parties every weekend, everybody is hugging everybody. Uh, people are just, uh, you know, having that primitive uh, primordial thinking uh, that a black man can survive anything. After all, something must kill a man. I hear people saying every, every day. But this is public health, and it's a serious <laughs> issue. Now, as to uh, uh, the professor, yeah. Anthony Fauci, uh, who is retiring, he has announced that he'll be retiring by December. Well, he's been in the uh, medical public space for about uh, 50 years, uh, 38 years as head of the uh, National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases, the NIAI uh, in the United States, and he's been, you know, uh, in that space also as a professional uh, for 50 years. He says he's moving on. He wants to move on to other things, uh, but he will still be in the area of science and research. But many will remember him for his wisdom, his integrity, his commitment, at the point where he became the face 
of the battle against the COVID pandemic in the United States. And he, 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 just, he, he, he acquitted himself honorably, you know, as a man, uh, you know, who could not uh, abandon science for politics. You recall his uh, regular encounters uh, with uh, President Trump, who even publicly on one occasion yeah. threatened to sack him and who always openly contradicted him. Uh, but we remember Anthony Fauci, you know, uh, U.S. top infectious diseases expert, as one man, you know, who stood up uh, to the bully, you know, uh, in the White House uh, to say that, look, science uh, is more important than people's uh, emotions. And it's just as well that he has had excellent relations uh, with President Joe Biden, who was president. Uh, he will be remembered also in terms of his service as a very distinguished American. After all, in the course of his career, he won the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest honor that could ever be bestowed on uh, any American citizen. So we congratulate him on his service to the Americans and also, by extension, to humanity. Thank you, Adesua.